Thank you so much, Millie. That was beautifully rolled down. Um, I'll start this call by saying thank you to Millie, who's supporting with the on-call admin and has been helping. Welcome to you all. It's lovely to see so many of you here today, familiar and new. Um, I want to begin. Our, this is our third and final Ethno Research Online event as part of this dissemination phase, where we are sharing the works of the Ethno Research publication um, more publicly. And today we're going to be looking at global music practices. Um, the Ethno online events are presented as a culmination of Ethno research, which was a four year research project exploring the subject of Ethno, comprising an international collaborative team led by Professor Lee Higgins. Lee, you can give us a wave. <laughs> And there's other people on the call that were part of that team, so do wave if you're part of that Ethno research team. The four-year research project is made possible through a grant from Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies and is part of a wider program of development for the Ethno program worldwide. Um, as I'm st starting with some thank yous, I also want to thank Suchet and Martina on this call who have been helping us. Uh, <laughs> Suchet and Martina all the way along to set these events up. Um, today's event is going to be a little bit smaller than um, previous ones. I would like to start by saying um, some apologies from Suzelle Riley, who was meant to join us today. Suzelle Riley is unwell and really wants to be here and says sorry that she can't be on the call to engage in the conversation. So apologies for that. So that leads me to introduce today our guest speakers. Katerina Doring and Gaia Gaia Matthews Mifune. We are delighted to have both of them on the call speaking from their expertise and experience. I will briefly introduce both, but Katerina and Gaia Gaia, you're welcome to introduce yourself more fully. Uh, Professor Katerina Doring um, has extensive research experience in the fields of ethnomusicology and music education, and as such sees her role as a triangulation. I love the way you were describing that, Katerina, triangulation between working in ethno on ethnobahia, your experience in ethnomusicology, and your experience in music Music education. So we are delighted to have you joining us on the call today. And Gaia Gaia is working with Ethno Malawi. We met yesterday and he shared many fabulous insights. So I'm delighted that both of you can be with us. And again, there's those apologies from Suzelle. Um, the recording, where will it be shared? Thank you for your comment there, Helena. Um, that's yet to be decided, but I think you should um, imagine it's going to be in the public domain. So, for example, we know that Ethno has a YouTube, but also the International Centre for Community Music has a YouTube page which shares a wealth of research resources, and we can pop that link in the chat to you as well. So the recording will be made publicly available. Um, that's important for consent purposes. Okay, I think before we dig into the conversation, I, we should start to watch a couple of videos of Ethno. As many of you know, because you, I'm guessing, how many people have been to an Ethno? Give us a wave. How many people have been to several Ethnos? Okay, great. Um, I, I've popped into one ethno, but uh, but that's it. I've not really experienced the full gathering. But just from popping into one in England, uh, Oxford, I noted that you know you can't really come to know an ethno unless you really experience it, unless you're part of the sounds and that communal process. So we offer these videos as an inroad into the conversations about ethno. We're going to start with a video from the Ethno World YouTube uh, site. So Lee, if you could share that now, please, that would be great. What is ethno? Is it music? Sharing? Fun? Friendships? Or is it more? Could it change your life? Can it make you grow? Does it have the power to make lasting change happen? Every year, since the past 30 years, 
JM International's Ethno Program is working in over 20 countries worldwide to bring together musicians in the spirit of generosity, respect, and openness. With over 8,000 musicians reached in over 80 countries, Ethno is a movement, a lifestyle, and a way of being. Ethno. Music changes everything. So as we heard, Ethno there described as a movement, a lifestyle and a way of being. But the pictures showed us a diverse range of spaces and places, a diverse range of localities whereby the music was being made. So we wanted to offer that at the start of our conversation. And also, as we have Gaia Gaia here from Ethno Malawi, we thought we'd just show one short clip from Ethno Malawi and then we'll go into the conversation. So Milia, are you okay to share that one too? Thank you so much. That looks like so much fun in Ethno Malawi. And you can access those videos on the Facebook page. We'll send links in the chats very soon. Um, just looks and sounds wonderful. So we're going to go to our conversation now. Why are we talking about global music practices? Well, firstly, this is something that's come through the Ethno Research publications. The reports have pointed to ethno being considered within the context of globalization. And I'll just share two screens before I pass over to Katerina and Gaia Gaia. So here we have our very own Sarah Jane Gibson, um, who's on this call today. And in the Ethno on the Road report, she wrote that 
a central experience within ethno is connecting with people from different parts of the world. Therefore, it's vital to explore ethno within the wider parameters of globalization. And in the Ethno Pedagogy and Professional Development Report, and we have Maria, one of the report authors on the call today, who might say hi in the chat, they're describing Ethno as an example of glocalization in practice. So Katerina can talk much more on this than I can, um, but glocal being that global and local together. And in the report, they say, Ethno could be described as an example of glocalization in practice, whereby some characteristics were core signature facets of ethno, i.e. the foundational principles and the core pedagogical practices, while others were more fluid and responsive to local needs, traditions and perspectives. So here I'll stop sharing my screen. I could tease out lots of other examples, but I just wanted to say why we're bringing this concept of the global to our conversation today. Katerina, I wonder now if it's a good time for me to pass over to you, if you want to introduce yourself and maybe say something about the issues of global, because you've got a rich experience working with Ethno Bahia, but we also talked about your Ethno Germany experience coupled with your researcher experience. So if I could pass over to you now, that would be wonderful. Okay, thank you, Joe. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, uh, nice to meet you here. Um, online again, uh, even if you are partly partially back to presence activities. Um, I, um, I am an ethnomusicologist uh, and also professor for music and art education. I'm living in Bahia since 28 years, but originally I am from Germany. And um, so uh, I'm a researcher on, on mostly African Brazilian musical traditions especially on Samadhi Harder, which I, I had, I have a long story on researching with Samadhi Harder, which was like for the uh, immaterial heritage uh, by UNESCO in 2005 and doing a lot of projects ever since. And then, um, well, in this, uh, in the last course of the years, I was again, uh, um, uh, approaching more this dialogue between the areas of ethnomusicology and music education. And in this course, I uh, accidentally, or by a musical friend, music friend from Bahia, I knew Ethno Germany and I uh, was invited to participate as a silent participator, like to, to learn about the methodology. And uh, it was really a, a revolutionary experience in so many ways. And this has a lot of to do with the local experience and the, the um, multicultural experience, which we are talking a lot about in Etno, because since I am from Germany and I have a cultural background, right, which dates like three decades ago, in Germany, and then have an all another uh, cultural background in, in Bahia, like three decades now. And so this was a, a special cultural shock of its own kind. It's like you come back to your own culture, but it's all different, you know, like this. So this was, um, it was a, a positive cultural shock in that way that I could be in Germany and experience a very multinational, multicultural experience. and. Uh, uh, um, feeling the, the 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 vision behind this and the great possibilities for my work here in Bahia. So this was in a two ways. It was really um, bridging a, a lot of things, and um, and we were four people from Bahia, which was all also a coincidence because I didn't know of the two other. I know only from my friend, and we were four people from Bahia, and there was. Uh, it was uh, giving birth to the Ethno Bahia in, in Ethno Germany. So um, this is very important for, for the discussion because what happens, and this was very mentioned, in, especially in the report from Sarah, that there, we have this um, 
we have this uh, like this mixed uh, experience that in a way we create a, we have a lot to deal with uh, decoloniality now in in Latin America in African countries in Asian countries and a lot of critics to Eurocentric approaches and only in global north approaches and epistemologies in all areas in in social science and cultural sciences in arts and then on the other way, what we, and I, I have read it in the reports from the other participants like uh, Malawi, Solomon Islands, for example, which I had more contact. And it, in, on the other hand, it is like you, you know that you need this experience, which is very much better elaborated in European countries, for example, you know, to think about uh, multicultural experience, music education, about community music education, about ne, all these things we discuss in ethno. But we need this mythology, we need this uh, technology also to bring it to our countries, because in our countries, we are living the reappearing experience from the 60s, maybe. A very cemented concept of education in all areas of culture and art. So this is the bouncing back of things, you know. And uh, on the other hand, of course, we see it, uh, uh, the European experience of ethno, for example, comes uh, to our countries. And then there is also the perception of uh, young people, contemporaneous people from these countries, which are very critical and see, well, but, on the other hand, our way of doing things is different. So we are questioning these things. The European, they have so many good ideas and good concept and we loved it, but we have our own ideas uh, in musical level and social level and social cultural level and in all spiritual. And so uh, this is one of the, and I felt it, during the ethno research, we had a lot of meetings and then uh, the report and the special meetings I had with Sarah. And this was one of the, for, for me, one of the main issues. Ne? Since I myself, I, I, I feel in this place of bridging things in all kinds, you know, like in, in academic science, because I am always in between ethnomusicology, music education, uh, uh, cultural studies, African Brazilian music, black studies. So this is all it, all this in between, and also because of the uh, my own uh, bicultural experience. And then you you are always in the place to bridge things, to um, to open up dialogues which are difficult. And the people and and this is what I want for now to close my 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 speech. One of the things that calls my attention in our discussions, but on our writings also, and also in ethno report, in, 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 uh, not criticizing because the, the report itself is very critical. The, sometimes you have these, uh, you have some passages ne, describing things, uh, uh, discussing things. And then there is also uh, like in, like a little counter sorts of, um, yeah, we don't know if you, if these uh, concepts or worlds or uh, ideas are really like this. It's really open and critical to itself or what the people say. But when what I felt is was like there is a lot of concepts, uh, words used in academic and cultural language, and which is like it's like as if it was a common ground but it's not always a common ground. So people understand them differently or in their cultural context, they understand them differently or they don't understand them differently, but they have a different weight or difficult or more positive or more negative connotation. And so we have, I felt a lot of these situations uh, in, in, in along these discussions. And, um, and I think um, towards our global, uh, defiance uh, uh, now is like we we can get more deeper inside the special local ethno context, local or regional or uh, national, um, and 
understand better what uh, in from for example from ethnomusicological uh, from ethnomusicology point of view um, there is a lot of discussion about using concepts in music and so uh, what the, the the like the 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 world music what is it yeah it starts by this né? and what is tradition what is folk and all these concepts which are like which are what is popular is very much discussed in um ethnomusicology but also in cultural studies and and i think this uh, for now going on further and deeper in the problematics of having a more multi really peer-to-peer -peer approach of discussing the series and experience né? of all the the ethno ethnos in um uh, in all these countries uh together on the same on the same level you know we have really now to clear more about some of the concepts which are behind the the music making of each experience cultural experience so um this is one one thing and the there is also, which comes together with it, there is one thing which sometimes in the report, it was a little bit like, um, this is your culture, this is our culture, this is our tradition, this is, and, and they also, uh, because it was very well uh, uh, elaborated about the, uh, the psychological, social, emotional, even therapeutical effect of, of being at Etno. And the other thing, this is for the individuals, for every single individual participating, I think it's like an incredible experience of some kind. And then, um, then in the discussion about these global, local, global, cultural differences, and it was like, again, it was like it was blocks or something like this. And what I want to say is that in, in every country and in every ethno, you have all the the um, all the I forgot the word now. All the umbrella, uh, all the scope of 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 individuals that lead differently with things. You know, the more closed ones, the more open one, the more eccentric one, and you have all this. Uh, all these, um, all these uh, individual markers, which is inside of every culture, it's not like uh, this culture is more like this or this culture is more in the in the own cultures or experiences, local experiences. We have all these kind of people, you know, these with all the uh, characteristics and, and special. Uh, abilities and, and personal types and so and sometimes I, I i i miss this a little bit to understand that inside it's not only the global south the north and south it's inside in our country we have all these we have all these differences of classes of races of of technology uh, uh traditional or so on and so um this is something which I, I felt it need to be deepened. These special uh, experiences in in the in the local called local experiences, so something like this. Well, these are some ideas too. Katharina, to thank you so so much. Goodness, you have um, tipped a lot out of the box there, and particularly brought our attention to difference. And that phrase when you said, you know, we're not always on a common ground, I think is very important for our discussion of localness, of balancing that global and that local. And, you know, you've talked about the difference culturally, the difference in young people's ideas about what they may want in their particular context, the different ways in which we speak and the different ways we come to know from research and practice and so forth. And I think you just highlighted the issue so beautifully there. Um, I'm going to share a couple of slides from the reports that you've really made me think of. And then I'm going to pass over to Gaia Gaia because you were also talking about the intricacies of balancing kind of that local global needs. And um, it'd be great to hear your thoughts. So I'll just show a couple of the things you made me think of. So when you were talking about difference, you know, 
This is from the Ethno Organisers report written by um, Dave Camlin and Helena Rees. Um, and they they have pulled out a quote from an ethno organiser. So this is an ethno organiser speaking about balancing local and global demands. And that person says, organising an ethno is both exciting while at the same time challenging, considering the diverse nature of the participating musicians, its global nature, the need to standardise your needs as an organisation, but being in tandem with the ethno world guidelines. So being aware of the requirements of the standards of the ethno organization, we have had the challenge as to where to start from a national ethno that makes sense to the local people for them to appreciate the global nature and impact of traditional music. So for me, this was really spotlighting the ways in which people might be balancing working with ethno as a global organization and responding to their local needs. I'll just show one more slide maybe because this is touching on Sarah Jane's work and Katerina, you mentioned Sarah Jane in reading the report several times in, in your discussion there. And Sarah Jane, if you'd like to respond, you can at any time. But Sarah Jane um, in the Ethno on the Road report was writing about Ethno as a space to engage and unearth uncomfortable truths about society. So the fact that we have this difference and that, you know, challenging things and complex issues might come through the ethno practice that's not something to step away from that might be a strength of ethno something it's really bringing Sarah I won't read this out I can see you've um, come on screen so do you want to say something to this no I would love to but I was actually thinking perhaps perhaps if Guy Guy spoke before me because I think he might have some great insights or so and then maybe I can respond or, or join the conversation a bit later Fabulous. In that case, Sarah Jane, I'll just read your quote and then I'll pass over to Guy. Guy, thank you. So in Sarah Jane's report, she's saying that it is vital that Ethno recognise the engagement with and the sharing of world music unearths some uncomfortable truths about society. Stokes, a researcher, argues that the globalisation of music cements the hegemony of significant racial and gendered hierarchies in many parts of the world, further supported by Wallach and Clinton, pardon my pronunciation there, who write, all observable musical practice results from concrete, often violent histories of unequal exchange. In relating this to ensembles of world music, Avril argues no form of representation stands outside relations of power. So this power that's always at play in these local exchanges, which have a global structure on top. So I'm going to stop sharing and pass over to Gai Gai. Now, Gai Gai, in our conversations, you were talking about um, young people responding to the music making and a potentially a loss of local uh, traditions as people look to foreign instruments, for example. So did you want to talk about that in terms of local and global? Uh, thank you very much. Uh and quite exciting uh, to listen to the views and also to read the research reports. Uh, quite uh, interesting uh, issues coming out there. Uh, for, for me and uh, Ethno Malawi, the, the first thing that we're looking at is uh, what does ethno, what does music, what does local music tradition to me or to the participant who is uh, actually uh, using the, the music or consuming the music. Because that music sometimes of course uh, functions uh, that are uh, relevant to the context where they are in. So at, at, at local level, um, I, I, I've been sharing this, uh, that uh, uh, there is a situation where most of the other people, old people, think that uh, the young people are losing it out because uh, they are uh, embracing foreign by using uh, foreign musical instruments. Uh, as such, they are also losing their identity, which is rooted in their traditional music. Um, 
So this is kind of, of a cry and then we need to find a solution. And what would be the solution? Uh, then we are saying, okay, let's go back to, uh, to what is there locally uh, in terms of the musical traditions. So we have to come up with programs that would revive and reinvigorate you know, uh, local music. Uh, the question is, why is it that maybe these young people are attracted to foreign musical uh, traditions or using uh, foreign musical instruments? Uh, to, to answer that is, uh, is something that, you know, uh, we have to, to, to look at the, the global uh, trends. So uh, probably these uh, young people, they are attracted to the uh, foreign musical trends because they're looking at the people uh, uh, who are making it big in terms of financial gains, but also the celebrities. They would like to be like those people, those celebrities. Uh, and so they are attracted to you. They are attracted to use this. They are forgetting their own musical traditions. And that's where the problem is. Now, um, what, what is happening is that you know, ethno comes in to remind or to bring these young people that you know, they can still utilize their local music, uh, blend it with uh, probably international uh, uh, flavors like they are doing now, but also they can use uh, the foreign instruments, foreign in courts, uh, or, or um, uh, be, because they are also uh, local instruments <laughs> elsewhere, uh, but because they are not originated from here, that's why they are kind of uh, like you know uh, foreign. Um, but uh, suffice to say that uh, the the ethno becomes now the platform where one can still go back to their roots, to their traditions but at the same time experience new trends as it is happening. So when you have other musicians coming from other countries, they are bringing to your ethno their own local musical traditions. But they are there, they're in their own, in their countries, there are local musical traditions. When they come here, they become foreign or international musical traditions. Now, when these meet, it's, it's like the local, and a local from here and local from there meeting together and making something beautiful. Uh, so th there is a, a thin line uh, really uh, that one could, uh, could maintain to say this is mine because at some point you will still have to embrace something that is coming from outside. In fact, the, the musical traditions that come with the participants from other countries enriches your understanding of your own music. And sometimes it actually uh, gives it more value. You start to realize that, oh, my tradition, my music is also very, very important. It has got that value because, you know, if I take it outside there, people will also embrace it just like we are doing uh, to embrace the other musical cultures and traditions from other, from other countries. So there is uh, the, the, the musical tradition that is locally relevant, uh, maintaining it, but also the wish to actually promote it. And how do you promote and where do you promote? You have to take it out. And so it, you, it, you, you, you take your music to elsewhere, and then you also embrace music from elsewhere into your own culture. So that kind of diverse is really uh, something that is making the ethnos, you know, of uh, significant value to, uh, to, 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 to the local situations as well. I think I, I, would, I would pause there for now. Thank you so much, Gaia Gaia. And um, lots of people, particularly Anka, is resonating with what you're talking about in the chat there. But before Anka, I might invite you to talk. But before I do so, because I know Sarah Jane might need to leave the call um, earlier. Sarah Jane, would you like to respond to the point we made earlier? And then Anka, if you'd like to unmute and speak to your comments in the chat, you're very, very welcome to. 
Hi, Joe. Thank you. Thanks, Guy Guy, and thanks, Katerina. It's um, it's so lovely to see you both again and hear your your perspectives and your points of view. I've um, I've been greatly influenced by um, the ideas of of both the people who are speaking today, um, because I think Katerina highlights that this this tension when we talk about a, a tension of of power when it comes to music making um it's not just something that's coming from the north and and happening in the south if we're going to use those terms but that it, it's happening within the countries too um and i think that's so important to recognize that um when we when we bring our music into ethno there's um there's so much happening through that exchange um, uh, uh, it could be uh, between the local music that's being made, but also with the international music coming in. And something that I've, or, uh, in terms of what Gai Gai has been talking about, is this: is how the international connection can be used to promote local music. Um, I was really struck by that in my most recent research, where by bringing people, international people, into ethno into ethno Malawi and I'm not sure about Bahia but um especially but in ethno Malawi it gave um the ethno became a platform from which to promote the local music making cultures and I thought that was really valuable um I also thought the fact that Malawi they um and maybe Gai Gai you can talk more about this but the the difficulty in 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 finding local traditional musical instruments. And so almost a, um, it becomes a necessity in a way to use the Western musical instruments um, as a way of, of uh, keeping some of these musical traditions alive. And I thought that was uh, quite interesting. Um, but really this tension there is a tension when it comes to performing music from different parts of the world. And in a, uh, this is where critical reflection is important. We're not saying, in fact, I think it would be a terrible thing if people weren't exchanging their music, but to sit and take a moment and reflect on where those tensions are and where those um, power imbalances might be and then to think about how to challenge that is something that I think is um, very special within ethno and gives ethno some amazing potential so I think that's all I have to say <laughs> so Jane that's fantastic and Caspi I can see you have your hand up but I just wanted to give Gaia Gaia a moment to respond to Sarah Jane's comment because she referenced him and then we'll pass over to you thank you for your patience uh, yes, uh, thank you very much for for, for, for that uh, uh, that point. Uh, indeed, you saw in the in the video clip that uh, the musicians there used some uh, drums, which are a kind of uh, foreign instruments or uh, new instruments that are not. Uh, usually used in the in the in the villages where the traditional music usually comes from. Um, the, the the tension that that has been there is that most of the people who make and use these uh, traditional instruments are old people. Uh, not many young people uh, are into the uh, traditional music making uh, instrument music making. As such, is it to find these musical uh, instruments? But now, what they have done is actually to use the modern equipment, the guitars, the keyboards, and then use use them to uh, to play the sounds of their local music. So that's something that is very interesting, and uh, it's it's something that uh, you can't stop because. That's what is appealing to these young people. So uh, in a way, the young people would be uh, trying to bridge the gap between the old and the new. So yeah, Ethno uh, will have to embrace that, I guess, uh, because uh, where there is no uh, local instruments, these young people will still want to play their own music using the, uh, the new uh, modern equipments. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. And should we pass over to Caspi now? So yeah, I talked about uh, about the Congo, and uh, firstly, I thought uh, that the same problem is in Malawi, uh, also in Congo. I think all of in Africa, and um, uh, I explained it last time. I so firstly, I want, wanted to say thank you for thank you for uh, uh, Sokri Malotra for his openers and um, his welcome during our discussion last time on the phone yeah uh, uh congo is a country with 400 450 ethnic groups and is full of young musicians who unfortunately have not opening in the world because of the cultural policy which almost don't exist um to travel is on Artist, uh, as in as on artist, is a luxury. But since they come not go to other place, at least the order can come to Congo to make them participate in this great and beautiful musical community of ethno. As uh, I myself had taken advantage of it and uh, that changed uh, the way I see and make music now. Um, so yeah, we are going with uh, Malotra to continue to exchange for this first edition of Ethno in Kinshasa. And um, yeah, ob obviously you are already invited to Kinshasa. That, um, that that uh, that I had to talk uh, to talk uh, for for now. Thank you so much, Caspi, yeah. and thank you for that invitation. Um, yeah. We, and if there's anything else further you'd like to pop in the chat, please, please do. Um, I'm, I'm I'm hoping I'm not stopping you too too early there. Thank you very much. Because I was wondering, mm -hmm. we're heading quite towards the end of the call, and it would be great to open up to the audience because um, I know that for example um, Anka was commenting in the chat and maybe before we open up Katerina I didn't know if you wanted to touch on the conversation that we were having about working with the ethno methodology across different contexts to share your insights on that thank you very much Caspi and please do continue to tell us in the chat if you can okay yeah, okay. Uh, following the speech of Caspi, um, even I, I recognize that in Congo is so much more dif differences but in between a big country with so many uh, uh, people and languages and music traditions and to bridge all these is it's a challenge of its own. You know, it's like if you have the, your own diversity add no in the, your own country is like a little bit like this. And this is um, this is very similar to the situation in Brazil in some kind, you know, uh, that uh, we are. This is what I mean. We also we have this. Of this is of course in in some in some proportion in every country there are always different and local traditions, and. Um, she, about the difference, uh, uh, Joe asked me, and though. There is, there is, it's like, it's not only the difference about culture and the music styles and the instruments and the, the things. It's like, I think the, mo the most intercultural problem of these things is the concepts which are inside of us. So the cultural background is not only the music we like, the instrument we play, the, the clothes we wear, and our visual ethnic markers or so. It's the concepts we have been grown up with. And this is, um, uh, this is myself being European. This is the most constant shock and most constant challenge and 
transformation you will go through living in another country to understand that most a lot of situations is like you say things in another culture to the people you think you are understood and the people don't understand them that way because they have other internal concepts so and this what is what I meant when when, when we had uh, this ethno Germany and ethno Bahia dialogue, which was wonderful. Is is now critics, but it's like I, I feel so much under my skin these differences and the conflicts and where the people they can not understand really understand each other, and this is because in Germany uh, you are very educated to believe in the in the in the structure. In, this, in the principles, in the theories, and everything is written, and everything is organized, and everything. So you grow up with all this thing of structure, and you think you in your life, everything must in a way fit in the structure. So this is the most important thing to follow the structure, which is like you learn it like in a universal building kind of type. In Bahia is nothing about this kind of structure, not in the European way. These structures are invisible. They are immaterial. They are fluid. There are circles, like in because it's a very African-based tradition here, and so so uh, social experience, cultural experience. So uh, it's like the people in themselves they have another inner concepts to feel life, to interact with other people, to make life works. So this all reflects in music making. And this is how uh, sometimes the difficulty to have uh, uh, theoretical methodological concepts is if on paper is wonderful, but really leading with the people in their cultural concept, in their inner concepts, in their psychological concepts and ideas of doing things is, uh, is a much different things. So what I meant by this is uh, we had uh, we had one situation in Ethno Bahia in the first one. Uh, our our ethno artistic mentors were from Ethno Germany. For it was Katrin and Christoph, and they were wonderful. And uh, it was like um, one participant, Flora. She said to Katrin, "We made this big." circle to for evaluation and everybody giving its own opinion and everything and then she said uh, and this was resuming me a little bit of this shock of this cultural shock is what she said to Katrin um Katrin you come from Germany and you have a wonderful structure you brought us a wonderful structure and concept and learning process but I wish you would really learn from us to be more confident in our collective process. Give it more space, let it go, let it happen. Because this is our, it's like, this is our technology. This is our common ground, our safe ground that we call, we do things that seems for you spontaneously only, like never planned, but they are not only spontaneous, they come from oral tradition, from long standing oral tradition on collective grounds. So there is also a mythology and a technology. And this is what I think which is really needed to be uh, more uh, connected in dialogue. Okay, I hope this helps a little bit. <laughs> Katerina, thank you. Learn from us um, is my key takeaway from your offering there. Thank you so, so much. Um, I do notice that Anka has put a few comments in the chat here. He's picked up on the diversity within India. Thank you, Suchet, for adding that. Um, but also you mentioned about learning more global traditions than perhaps local. So I wondered if you wanted to talk more on that, Anko. Hi, uh, and thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, actually, uh, because of pandemic, uh, I was lucky enough to be part of uh, three, four ethno sessions recently. Uh, and this happened from 2020 till 2022. I think this year also I participated in a couple of ethnos. Um, one of my keen observation was apart from uh, me learning songs, there was so many cultural exchange which, ha which happened. So um, where I learned that uh, there is 
similarity between say a culture from so uh, i don't remember the place but uh, i think it is in chile uh, some place uh, rapanui yeah so rapanui the way the uh, culture is there it is very similar to some of the cultures in our india where uh, in our rural places if we go we can see some similar kind of uh, dynamics in the way the the small city looks like small town looks like small village looks like and the way they make songs also is very similar uh, although the only thing that i found as a difference was that uh, in india some of those songs are not heard uh, a lot as in they are not so much popular because there is a different kind of dynamics when it comes to uh, hierarchy in indian context there are so many music which is happening in india uh, but i'm glad that some of the indian music is also reaching global stage in various ways and for sure ethno is one of the uh, contributor in that because i have heard um, so many of my fellow friends who have uh, participated in different ethnos they have shared uh, classical music and they have collaborated with different instruments and uh, various um, structures have been changed like classical music is very strict in its approach uh, even there is a certain level of hierarchy and structure which is kind of fixed and uh, we are supposed to follow that but when we glow in a global context like suppose if we want to incorporate different instrument or different style of playing we need to be flexible and that flexibility is uh, incorporated when we are making music in a global format and that is something which i see happening when i participate in global event like ethno uh, so that is something which i saw happening um, in couple of ethnos even there is this patriarchy thing which i felt was uh, very predominant in some of the cultures uh, to an extent where uh, the way women and men are treated in society is so common in um, across all the world across all the globe i, I can't point out a uh, finger on maybe some particular cultures but there is so much similarity which is there uh in different cultures and i also related to it that uh, actually in in india i feel that similar um, songs are made because of these kind of thing like uh, if if a girl is being married to a man's house there is the song made in a very uh, special way where they say that the girl has to move out of uh, her parents place to a new place and now she has to be uh, like uh completely devoted to the new family and the songs are made with that context and that is something which i saw similar in other uh, cultures as well so that is something which i uh, felt is really amazing to see um and uh, also learn about different cultures because i always felt that india is having this kind of uh, patriarchy but when you learn about different culture you get to know that other cultures are also very similar to us only there is no difference um in a global uh, thing also the point that uh, uh, gaiga mentioned i completely agree to it that uh, um, there are so many great amazing indian instrument and uh, even i when i started learning music i started focusing on western music more uh, as opposed to indian music and recently i have started making that switch where i have started learning indian classical music and also i have started learning some of the indian instrument as well so uh, that is something which i can see is a, a trajectory in general music uh, music community where we uh, kind of get diverted towards the uh, global music arena and then we and it all depends on our personal choices if uh, someone feels that they want to uh, feel the connection back to their root they might tend towards learning some of the uh, ethnic instrument or maybe they will continue learning uh, the western instrument as well and it's a personal choice where they can explore uh the rooted music the cultural music on any on any western instrument also because i've seen uh indian classical music being played on western instrument like a piano or a guitar or uh, maybe like indian ry rhythms are played on a uh, drums there are so many similar things happening uh, in the world also oh that's a really good point sujit thank you for sharing that uh one thing which i actually felt in my first ethno experience was i started appreciating my uh, local folk music and i felt that uh, some of the uh, local folk music because i belong to up and uh, in up there is uh, this beautiful music scene uh, in the language called as bhojpuri i quickly write that in the chat so bhojpuri is 
the language that we speak speak in this state in India. I'll write the name in the chat. And um, that's that's what I realized that uh, uh, some of these music also needs to be uh, shared with the uh, global context. And uh, in one of the session, when I shared one of the songs, which was very interesting because the rhythm patterns were was very unique. And uh, I heard a couple of participants attempt those song on a Western instrument and it was sounding amazing. Uh, I remember one of my uh, friend from uh, Ethno Chile attempted that song and she shared a rendition online on uh, Instagram. And it was beautiful to see some of the uh, uh, instrumentation and the, some of the uh, like melody being played. And even the language was sounding very beautiful when I heard it out uh, on Instagram. So these are some of the points that I want to share. And again, there, there's so much to share and so much to learn. Uh, and still there is scope of learning so much again. So uh, I think, uh, first of all, I would like to like thank you again for allowing me to speak and then be part of this amazing community. Thank you. Anka, thank you very much. And you're again raising these issues of different forms of power that are always at play, especially when you were talking about the patriarchy there. And thank you for bringing us back to what does it mean to use different instruments if we're working with our traditional or not traditional instruments from our localities. Um, I'm going to pass over to um, Irina now because she would like to talk on her comment on the chat and I know that we're swiftly moving to the end of the call and I'd like to allow space for as many people that want to contribute to contribute. So Irina can I hand over to you please? Um, thanks Joe. Kia ora everyone. Kia ora from New Zealand. It is quarter past four in the morning but it's a delight to be present and to be among this many professionals in the area, it's, it's true. It truly is a pleasure. I made a comment about the local and uh, the global and local practices that they contribute to it's the development of personal ethnic and musical identity. And that is something that I've experienced when I moved from home from uh, Macedonia to New Zealand to actually um, investigate culturally diverse practices in New Zealand. And New Zealand has this particular context. It was beautifully explained and we touched a bit uh, on that in the previous session. Um, what I've experienced, so I haven't attended Ethno, but I will attend Ethno in January. I did attend uh, an event, uh, Trans Global Music uh, of Ethno, and I had an, ex uh, an I had an opportunity to experience different ways of music in, different ways of music making. At the first time when I was there, I was afraid to engage with it because I was afraid that I might damage the authenticity of, of the music. But then uh, it went on to exploring different ways of expression. But mainly um, what I want to talk about is maybe the development of identity, the personal identity. When I was at home, I was engaged because of my family. I got to know the ethnic music, the ethnic Macedonian music. When I went to um, education, I was sort of enculturated into Western practices. And that sort of became my musical identity. But when I moved away, so basically folk, because of peer ident identification and affirmation, the folk music of Macedonia sort of became not suppressed, but not overly expressed in my music practice. When I moved to New Zealand, I was a minority and I started constantly thinking about identity and how does that relate to my music practice. And what I did realize was that the music that I identified with was Western classical at the, at the time, belonged to a culture that I did not identify with. So there was a shift in my personal and musical identity, ethnic identity. And when I moved away, when I was exposed to different ways of musicking, different practices, I started comparing and I, I realized that the music that I identified with was the music of another culture that I did not identify with. So basically, by having experiences in these two styles, I became, I started comparing concepts and ways of how music happens in different uh, practices. And I sort of started to re reinventing, re finding my voice in my identity. Basically, it was an experience for me to reaffirm how I stand and just reimagine my standing at this particular context to find my voice. And basically, that whole 
experience of just experiencing different practices made me think about how my music affects me and how does that positions me in the whole wider context that was all I wanted to mention and thanks for this opportunity thank you wow thank you so much Irena and thank you for joining us at such a awful time of the night and um, when you speak about identifying with the music culture of another and then using these practices to reformulate your own musical identity it's just fantastic and I wanted to ask were you on the call last week when we had the identity um, and cultural diversity and inclusion discussion Yes, yes. Great. Okay, fabulous. Because otherwise, I was going to say we'll send the recording to you soon. Because uh, that very much resonates was, with what you said. It was an amazing. I'm currently working on something. I'm writing something about that. And it was basically a tick, tick, tick. All of the aspects are really important. And I think that Ethno, just the opportunity to attend Ethno, contributes to establishing and reaffirming one's position and then that reflection with what we do, what our folk music brings to the table is something that maybe contributes towards more understanding, like realizing where we as persons stand and how do we contribute to that conversation of just opening up to more diverse musical practices, more the ways, music in ways, basically. Absolutely. Thanks again. And Thank you. We'll, we'll be sharing the recording of that very, very soon. Sujet, did I have a question for you in the chat about the trans global music of Ethno and where that event was? So I don't know if you want to pop an answer to that. Uh, I, can, I can answer it in the chat. It's not a problem. I want to leave space for other people if they want to join. It's not a problem. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, what you have highlighted, although we might have some final words from Katerina and Gaia Gaia, because we have a question in the in the chat that we might come to, but you've highlighted that kind of importance of critical reflection. And just because Suzelle Riley was so keen on this concept offered by Sarah Jane Gibson through the Ethno on the Road reports, I just want to show one final slide from there, and then maybe we'll address this question in the chat that I think was proposed by Fiona Everson. We'll come to that next. So um, just be, I'll share one final, final thing here. So yeah, um, I'm sharing this because Suzelle was going to speak to this today. Um, Suzelle was very much interested in um, Ethno as a space for critical reflection, as has been proposed by Lee Higgins and Sarah Jane Gibson. And they say that Ethno on the road does fall within the tensions of globalization and the power dynamics that come with it. And we've heard Anka mention some power dynamics and, and others, and that this should not be overlooked. By providing space for critical reflection of the intricacies of power and agency when rehearsing and presenting the music of the other, Ethno on the Road, and any ethno perhaps has the potential to have a powerful impact on a variety of audiences I would say perhaps globally, if that's okay, I'm altering your words there, Sarah Jane, as well as their participants. Um, and I think, Arena, your sharing was a beautiful example of that critical reflection. So there we're embracing the issues and the intricacies of power that come up as we make music together from diverse places and spaces. I'm going to stop sharing that now. Um, and oh, okay, some more messages. Yeah, and I want to just um, bring us before we finish to Fiona's question about Fiona, you're asking, does this point towards certain universals in music or musical behavior? Fiona, would you like to unmute and ask your question? And then I invite Katerina or Gaia Gaia, or anyone to respond to this? Yes, hello there. Um, now, I'm not an ethnomusicologist, so this question is possibly ignorant, but I'm going to ask it anyway. As we talk and think about bringing together people of different cultures, different traditions, are there certain things that are common? And could we use that as sort of a springboard towards musical understanding and participation, even though there are obviously lots of differences? So I don't know if this idea of certain uh, universals is uh, 
a theory that has been sort of denounced or is one that's embraced within ethnomusicology, but um, perhaps someone could could comment or or clarify that point. Katerina or Gaia Gaia, did you want to respond to that? You don't have to, it's up to you. Okay, um, this thing about universals and, and all this né, is, is, this is one of the things which is so complicated in, in debate, né? because what is universal? What is it supposed to be? You know, uh, the problem is that we are in a big, in a big transformation in globally, this is global, that we are in a big transformation. And this transformation is like, it's happening everywhere. This already started with cyber age and, uh, and the internet and all these things transformed everything in every remote place on the world. And so um, I, I think some of these um, binaries, you like traditional, modern, global, local, and all this thinking, uh, binary thinking, I think this is something to overcome. This is really important. And I think more like in parallels or in circles or in, in, um, in, 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 in there are, I am always acting and thinking and feeling in several levels. And the music, the, for me, the most important experience uh, with, with uh, music here in Bahia, with traditional music, popular music, it's more African Brazilian music, is that the, most of the music musicians, even the supposedly traditional ones, they are like a bio tri musical and this is for me something of the key of the key discussions that it's not only to be i i have we preserve traditional music have to we do this music or this music or it's too global or it's too technological it's too to media or or to commercial it's more about being all of this you know it's like yeah, the same way you have possibility here for music musicians that are from here that are tradition rooted but they have a, a good uh, uh, let's say uh, commercial outcome to be professionals this is also something that helps them to revalue value their traditions so um, I think there is uh, something going on. I don't like the world universal, but I think there is something, of course, in the global scale, global scale that is really approaching us on dialoguing, which has a lot to do with internet and access and hearing things, all music all over the world. But um, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't think it is so necessary to define universals in music. It's more, more about defining uh, our necessity of dialogue and approaching music, arts, cultural understandings, and and doing by doing this, we can reinforce local tradition and the local tradition also this is a, a long discussion already which was made by um Apadurai about the landscapes it's not anymore the idea that everything that is local is only geographically rooted to this ethnic people you know this is something that this the translocal this is a new concept is being discussed there is a translocal movement now for us for example for summer jihad Angola, and so many local traditions which are conquering the world. We have Maracatu groups all over Europe. And so in this, th there is something more to be discussed. There is something more than just like this, ah, there is this local tradition, there is this global overseeing. And so I, th I think it's, it's much more complex. Thank you so much, Katerina. And we'll end with that complexity, I think, um, as we are heading towards the final few minutes of our call. Um, this has been the final um, dissemination event online for the Ethno Research Project. And I want to thank you, Katerina, and Gaia Gaia for your contribution and for everybody on the call. But before we officially end, I just want to pass over to Lee Higgins and then we'll be wrapping up in a few minutes. Thank you all very much. Yeah, thanks. 
everyone for a real stimulating uh, discussion. As Joe said, um, the ethno research is in its sort of dissemination period, and this is the uh, sort of last online um, uh, 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 presentation we're doing. But I just wanted to say what an amazing uh, project. If we think of ethno, and Magnus is on the line, I can see if we think of ethno starting just over 30 years ago and we arrive here, 2022, and we're having these types of discussions uh, that that the project, if we think of ethno as a sort of a, a history, historical art there, if that's a project, you know, it's you know, it's really found some real inroads some, some, for some complex and difficult discussions, for sure, but also resonant of the times that we live in. And I just think it's worth remembering what a, a fabulous project it is. So as we come towards the end of the ethno research part of it, which we've got about six or seven weeks left before we meet in Germany and we 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 show the final kind of things, the dissemination, the idea of the outward facing things. There will be three um, videos that will be edited from this collection that we're doing. There'll also be three animations that you'll see, short two and three minute animations. And the one they're working on at the moment is uh, resonant to this. It's called F, it's going to be called Ethno 2022. So it's kind of like where we are now. Some of these very discussions that flowed out of another report that you'll see that Sarah Jane headed up around sort of ethno um, global. So we're taking the opportunity to create a short animation reflected of those sorts of things. So there'll be three of those things available. There'll also be a chapter book that will appear uh, next year. Um, and of course, our uh, work and the ethno uh, um, discussion continues in very many different forms for example in conferences and you'll notice that sarah jane she mentioned she's in new orleans at the moment at society of ethnomusicology conference and she'll be presenting i think in about half an hour or an hour or so on 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 ethno so that the ideas that have been generated through the ethno research work re responding to this amazing 30 year or so project you know is being moved into wider discourses across the world and i think that's something to be proud of as 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 a movement so we're very excited to be sharing the final things in six weeks or so times in 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 germany and also engaging with the the team on on some logistical things like um issues of safeguarding and etc because as this thing gets bigger and bigger there are, are other uh things to to respond to so ethno research in that sense has been part of that so i'd like to say thanks very much for the speakers i'd also like to say a massive thanks to joe for really bringing these um three events to fruition and of course uh i know it's clear there's been uh Big, big support from uh, uh, Millie, Suchet, Martina, uh, uh, you know, supporting these um, of, events. So thanks very much for a stimulating um, conversation. Thank you, Lee. And let's take this moment to formally give a big round of applause, a big thank you to our speakers, panelists today, Katerina and Gaia Gaia. Thank you so, so much. And thank you to everybody that's contributed in these conversations. Without you, this wouldn't be the event it is. And we appreciate all of your um, discussion and provocations. Thank you so much. As Lee said, we will share recordings of these events shortly. Give us two weeks. We're a bit behind at the moment. Um, and thank you all very much. Um, thank you, Millie, Suchet, Martina, Lee, and to everybody on the wider team. And Katerina and Gaiga, it's been an absolute pleasure working with you both. So we look forward to seeing you in another time, another place, somewhere, online or in person. Have a lovely rest of your day or evening. And um, yeah, be in touch soon. Thank you. Bye, everyone.